I'm the Executive Director of the United Counseling Service. We're very happy to have you here today as we celebrate our 65th anniversary in providing services to Bennington County community. UCS started in 1958 when two separate entities came together to form the United Counseling Service. And today we serve more than 3,000 Bennington County residents, your friends, your neighbors, on an annual basis, and we have 300, just over 300 staff. We work with community partners extensively to build a strong community. Our services have expanded to include residential uh, homes for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities, mental illness, we provide Head Start, Early Head Start services, crisis services, and addiction services, and many more. And we grow and change what we are providing to our community as the needs of our community grow and change. Thank you for joining us tonight as we uh, listen to Me Too Orchestra. So very happy to have you here. They will perform Beethoven's Symphony No. 6, Thank you to our evening sponsors, Taconic Music, Bennington Banner, and Manchester Journal. And thank you to Ann Corso and her team at Southern Vermont Arts Center for the opportunity to hold this event in this beautiful space. At a time when mental health and substance use challenges are at levels never before seen in our community, the message that Me Too Orchestra brings to us is more important than ever before. We can only succeed when we support each other, include each other, and educate each other in embracing new and different perspectives. We are so excited to present this group of talented musicians who are not defined by their illness and who work to erase the harmful stigma often associated with mental illness. Please join me in welcoming me to Orchestra of Burlington, led by music director and conductor Michael C. Coburn. So much for joining us for this performance by Me Too Orchestra Burlington, a performance, as you heard, of Ludwig von Beethoven's Symphony No. 6, a uh, symphony that is unique in a number of ways, but especially because it's the only symphony that Beethoven wrote that was intended to musically describe specific scenes in nature, scenes that Beethoven actually explained in the subtitles for each movement. I'll talk more about that in just a moment. Nature was very, very important to Beethoven for reasons that I'll, I'll uh, describe here in a moment. But when I found out that we were going to be presenting this concert in the middle of May on this beautiful campus here at Southern Vermont Arts, um, I thought, you know, it's going to be the middle of spring. It's a beautiful campus. Let's do Beethoven's six. It'll be, it'll be perfect. Now, being a native Vermonter, I know that being in the middle of May is no guarantee that we're going to have beautiful spring weather, right? But we got lucky, did we not? I mean, it's just so beautiful out there, and we are thrilled to be here on this, on this beautiful campus, as I mentioned. Uh, nature was very important to Beethoven. It was a source of inspiration. Much of his music uh, came to him as he was strolling through the countryside, as he was communing with nature. But nature was important to Beethoven for other reasons as well. When people think of the kind of stereotypical tormented artist, they often, I think, picture that furrowed brow of Beethoven, right, that we see in so many artist depictions. Uh, and it's commonly known that Beethoven did struggle uh, with, with his own mental health throughout his life uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, first and foremost was uh, the ongoing deterioration of his hearing, the most important sense to Beethoven, which he lost over the course of his life, which seemed to him to be the, the greatest uh, insult of fate, right? So he wrestled with uh, difficult feelings surrounding that loss of hearing. But he also had a number of family issues and other uh, kind of spiritual challenges throughout his life. And from the time he was a young man, when he was a teenager, he would often find that, that those long strolls through the countryside, that communing with nature, was not only an inspiration for his music, but was also a way for him to center down 
to regain his sense of spiritual centeredness and to really help him to kind of keep the perspective that he needed to make his way through a very difficult life. So I think in many ways this music is really the perfect vehicle for me to, for the message that, that we want to convey to our audiences because music is such an important source of solace to us in much the way that nature is a source of solace to Beethoven. And, um, and, and that, you know, the, the message that this music brings of, of conveying, of course, natural beauty uh, is it, just one of the most exquisitely, exquisitely beautiful pieces in the repertoire, but also that message about the importance of, of maintaining one's own sense of centeredness and mental health and how important that is as well. So we're going to present the entire symphony to you here today, all five movements, but we are going to take a little break between the first and second, and the second and third movements, so we can tell you a little bit more about the mission of Me Too. Uh, as I mentioned, Beethoven often uh, offered rather uh, descriptive titles for each one of these movements, and the first movement is one of the most descriptive. It's called The Awakening of Cheerful Feelings Upon Arriving in the Countryside.
Hello, everyone. I'm Phoenix Crockett, and I am the Managing Director of We Do Burlington. We are tonight, with this show, rounding out our 12th year as a group, uh, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> We started as a ragtag group of musicians with, an, with a mission. And now there are three such orchestras. There's one in Boston, there's one in Manchester, New Hampshire. We have a flute choir, we have a chorus. We are making music everywhere now. We have had a wonderful season. I hope you all agree. <laughs> and what we do every week is we intentionally create what we call the stigma-free zone, a space that we can all show up to, musicians who live with mental illnesses and those that support them, and make art together, art as beautiful as what you just heard. And then go out in the community, like with you all tonight, and we spread that message. Part of spreading that message means that we've played in a lot of interesting places. We have played in prisons and penitentiaries, we have played in elementary schools, we have played outside, we have played at the airport. <laughs> and it feels good for a group of musicians like us to be playing in such an absolutely gorgeous venue. And thank you to the United Counseling Service for inviting us to be here tonight and share this with you all. Absolutely. At different shows I share different versions and, and ideas of uh, our story, of my own story with the group. I was not always the managing director of Me Too Burlington. When I started with them, I was a teenager with a bad haircut, and I sat there. <laughs> I was also a person who had not yet figured out how to deal with their bipolar disorder, and I needed an outlet, and I needed structure, and I needed people to look at me every day and say, you're a musician, and you are loved, and we're here with you, and we support you, even if I wasn't always supporting the group, even if I, what I had in me to give was only to exist in the realm. And I think that's really important. And I've seen that story play out over and over again for musicians that are here tonight, musicians that can't be with us tonight, from the many hundreds of people that have cycled in with us uh, over time. Wow. I love being people right here. We've played to small groups, we've played to big groups, and I'm looking at this group now, and I'm so grateful for all of you coming to hear the absolutely gorgeous Beethoven Sixth Symphony, uh, which, by the way, is one of my favorites, and it's absolutely perfect. Every single person who's stood on stage so far has said it. I cannot describe for you how much this music needs to be played in this weather. It's absolutely wonderful. So thank you to each and every one of you for coming out tonight, for supporting the United Counseling Service, for supporting the Me Too Burlington Orchestra, Let's hear the second movement. <laughs> So there's a small irony in the second movement, is, which is um, one of the longer and more involved movements in the symphony, but it also has the shortest description. It is seen by the brook.
Uh, we all know in Vermont, as they say, if you don't like the weather, just wait five minutes. Well, the same must be true in Germany because the storm comes out of nowhere and all the country folk must go scurrying off to uh, cover somewhere because we hear thunder and lightning and, and just the most vivid musical depiction of a thunderstorm you can imagine. But as is often the case with summer storms, it doesn't last long. It uh, recedes off into the distance and as it does, we hear the sound of a shepherd's call, uh, first in the clarinet and then the horn. And uh, Beethoven goes on to describe the final movement as his feelings of gratitude after the storm has passed. These are the final three movements of Beethoven's Sixth Symphony, and thank you again so much for coming out to hear this uh, performance by me to Burlington.
all so much for coming today. This has been a production of the United Casting Service and the Me Too Burlington Orchestra. Have a great night, everybody.